Hello, and thank you for joining me as I reflect on the coronation of King Charles III by looking at three of the symbols used in the coronation. And the second of these is the scepters, the royal scepters. There will be two scepters used uh, during the coronation service, and that is the sovereign scepter with the cross and the sovereign scepter with the dove, both of which are highly symbolic. And of course, a scepter uh, is a, a symbol of royal power. It is demonstrating in a visible form the fact that this person is majesty, this person is sovereign, this person rules and reigns. And as I think about that scepter, again I turn back to the events leading up to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ and back to Matthew chapter 27. And reading from verse 29, we read this. And twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and put a reed in his right hand, and kneeling before him they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit on him, and took the reed, and struck him on the head. They didn't give him a scepter of royalty, they gave him here this scepter of mockery. They put a reed in his right hand, as if it was a scepter. And then they took that mock scepter out of his right hand, and hit him over the head with it. Incredible events just leading up to the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ. But scepters were actually part of the Lord's own family history. Let me take you back to the book of Genesis and chapter 49. And in Genesis 49 the tribes of Israel are um, being blessed by their father. And we read this about the tribe of Judah, verse 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. At this point in Israel's history, they'd never had a king, but they would eventually have kings. And their first and greatest king would be David, and then his son Solomon. And uh, Saul, of course, was king before David, but he wasn't really God's choice. He was man's choice. And David was the first king of God's choosing. And he came from the tribe of Judah, from the tribe of Judah. And many, many years later, a son would be born from the tribe of Judah, from the town of Bethlehem, and we call him Jesus Christ. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of God. Well, you know, the Bible paints a picture, a very clear picture, that we as sinful men and women, we as people who have done, said and thought many wrong things, are in fact rebels to God. We are in rebellion against him. You see, a scepter is a symbol of royal authority, but outside of Jesus Christ, we are all rebels. We're rebels in the sight of God. Let me read to you from Romans 8. Romans 8 and verses 7 and 8 says this. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law indeed it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. And when the Bible speaks of flesh here, it means sinful flesh. Sinful flesh. So it's impossible for us to please God. We are rebels against him. But you know, God has made a way for rebels to be reconciled to him. God has made a way for sinful rebels to be reconciled to him. Let me read to you from the same book, the book of Romans. And chapter 5. The book of Romans in chapter 5 and verse 10 says this. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his, by his life. Reconciled to God by the death of his son. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, he was bearing all my rebellion. All your rebellion. All of our sin in defiance of God's authority was poured out on Jesus Christ and God's wrath against sin, against our sin, was poured out on him there. He was punished in my place for all of my rebellion. You know, that reconciliation is available. Jesus Christ rose from the dead and today he's alive and he makes the offer, be reconciled to God. Let me finish with a verse from 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians in chapter 5 and verse 20. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, 
be reconciled to God. If today you have never placed your faith and trust in Jesus and you're still a rebel before the authority of God, accept this free gift of reconciliation. Be reconciled to God. Thank you for listening.